In today's video, we're going to be building a kitchen island, and it's the second one that I've built on the channel, and if you'd like to see that other video, you can click on the link in the description below. Uh, as you can see, my kitchen is a fairly small one, so I needed to address some of the storage issues, like where to put a microwave and other things in the kitchen. Uh, so what I did was I did more of a boxed-in design instead of an open frame design, and on the left-hand side there are doors, and there's doors on both sides that match. Um, there's a shelf and then the bottom of it has a floor in it. So you can really fill this up with a lot of stuff. I've got the microwave and some cookbooks on the shelf with different odds and ends underneath. On the right hand side, I've got a series of four drawers uh, increasing in size as you go down. And these drawers slide through both sides of the island giving you access from both sides. So that's a pretty handy thing uh, depending on what side you're working on. When it comes to the materials, the top is made from yellow pine and the base is made from spruce and half inch plywood. So all these materials plus the hardware used can all be purchased from Lowe's, Home Depot or similar type of hardware store. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the steps that it took to get this made. So let's get started. So this is going to be a pretty long but fast paced video using a lot of tools and techniques. I first start out by prepping the lumber for the top. I'm using two by tens ripped up into about two and a quarter or two and a half inch sections. It, that dimension doesn't really matter, just depends on how thick you want the top to be. So I'm ripping these to be oversized because after it's all glued up, I'll plane down these sections before joining them into the full top. And um, there's no mechanical fasteners between these um, sections. Each one is roughly uh, just a little under, well it's about 12 inches each and the reason for that is my planer is a 12 and a half inch planer so I'll glue up these sections and then I plane them down afterwards and that makes the tops very smooth and then once all these tops were planed I used my track saw to joint the edges so I'm using it like a joiner to cut the edges straight and 90 degrees. To join up the three sections, I'm using a biscuit joint, and I'm not using it for its strength, but for its alignment. When you use a biscuit joiner, you are indicating from the top every time, so it cuts all those little biscuit slots, the same from the top face of the kitchen island. Then once you slide them together, the tops are nice and flush, and any uh, sort of irregularity or unevenness is easily sanded away in the end, as long as your biscuit joiner is cutting nice and accurate. I use pipe clamps for my glue up and just make sure that you have even pressure top and bottom to avoid the bowing that pipe clamps can kind of put into your pieces. Next up I needed to prep the material for the legs on the island. There's a leg in each corner and then there's a center divider that has a vertical part that is the same dimension as those legs, which in my project is two inches. I started out with some two by six material, ripped it in half, and then cut it to a rough length and then glued each pair together and did them all at once like that just with the glue every other joint. Once these pieces are dry I remove them from their clamps and then joint two faces. This is the start of dimensioning them down to their final dimension of two inches. Once they're jointed I take them to the table saw and rip it closely to two inches but bring them down to their final dimension on my thickness planer. Next up, I turn my attention to the feet, and they are basically the same construction as the legs, just a slight difference in dimension. They are a little bit uh, bigger, so there's a little bit of a step between the legs and the feet. And I do those the same by ripping, gluing, and then joining, ripping, and planing to get them to their final dimension. And then there I cut a small miter on the ends and then lay out for the mortises. Then using my hollow chisel mortiser, I cut out those mortises that will receive the legs. Next up is getting the tenons cut for these mortises. These tenons will be on the legs of the island. So first I cut the leg material to length and then using my radial arm saw with a dado blade installed, I cut those tenons to fit the mortises. By cutting the mortises first, I'm able to accurately cut those tenons to fit the mortises exactly. The next parts to work on are the lower rails of the island. I start out by planing them down to their dimension and then jointing one edge and ripping them to their width. Next up, I need to lay out the mortises on the legs themselves. So I do so and then cut them out on my hollow chisel mortiser. Then to cut the tenons on the lower rails, I'm once again using my dado blade on the radial arm saw. You'll notice in this clip that there's some additional material on that lower rail towards the inside. That'll be used to cut a rabbit for holding the floor of the island. The upper and lower rails are the same dimension with the difference being the upper rail has a mortise instead of a tenon like the lower rail. Once the mortises were cut out, the rails were temporarily installed to figure out the spacing of the center divider. That material is the same as the main legs on the island, so it was cut to length, then the tenons cut on the ends. 
then the mortises were cut into the upper and lower rails and that center divider installed. The rails that connect the front and the back of the island were next made. I made them by first milling the lumber down to the dimension using the planer, joiner, and table saw, and then had to figure out the mortise and tenon joint. You can see it's going to be a little tricky to notch around that upper rail. The first step was just cutting the mortise in the upper part of the leg and then using the radial arm saw to shape out that tenon. And you can see where it is designed to notch around that upper part of the rail. This is the type of joint that you might not anticipate when designing the piece, but as you're building it, sometimes you need to problem solve and get things figured out. But it was a fun little joint to cut. Next up is closing in the panel that you see me holding there. That's the ends of the kitchen island. I do so by using a half inch router bit, routing a dado all around all the pieces, the legs and upper and lower rails. Then using some slightly plain down two by material that's ripped to a width, I make some little center divider pieces that also receive that same dado and they all match up. They're all cut centered in each piece. The panels themselves are cut from a half inch piece of birch plywood using my track saw and then cut to length on the radial arm saw. Then those pieces will just slide snugly right down into those grooves. And this just gives it a nice little simple paneled look and using the plywood makes for a very stable panel that you don't have to worry about expanding and contracting. I quickly knocked down the corners of the end panel components with a hand plane and then turned my attention to the floor of the island, first cutting a rabbit in the lower rail, and I cut that rabbit into that additional material that I referred to earlier. For the floor, I took some 2x6 material that had been planed on the two faces and then resawed them right in half, jointed one edge, and then ripped it to a clean width, and then later I'll cut them to a final width to fit the actual island's base. I cut them to length on the radial arm saw and then fit them into the base of the cabinet. And then the two outside pieces of the floorboard had to be notched to fit the end panels. To get all the floorboards to work out properly, I had to rip several of them down until I got a nice tight fit. Then I turned my attention to the center divider, taking those divider legs and ripping a groove down the center of them, and then a corresponding groove in the floorboard that laid between them. This groove is the size to accept a piece of Luon, so it's about five millimeters, I think is what it is, a little less than a quarter of an inch. Then I cut that uh, panel down using my track saw and temporarily installed it. Next up was cutting the actual shelf for the island and also used my track saw to do that too. And this is cut out of a piece of that half inch birch plywood that I used in the end panels and also had to notch it out to fit on those end panels. Here's a quick time lapse of showing the process of gluing the end panels up. So getting into a little bit of assembly now, I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on all the joints. There's a lot of joints to keep up with on this piece. So I'm doing so as quickly as I can. I've got all my parts labeled to make it a little simpler for me. And to make sure that I glue this thing up flat and square, I did so on top of my table saw. The glue up got a little hectic, so I had to do it off camera, but here's a closer look at what I did. We've got pipe clamps going across the front and the back, holding this middle stretcher in tight between the two end caps. And then I put a board across the top, board underneath the bottom, and these two F-style clamps on front and back are pulling down on that center divider, uh, making the mortise and tenon joint right here nice and tight. And as for this joint, that is just being held in by that middle clamp, but there's no gap underneath that uh, shoulder, so we're looking good. I let it sit overnight for the glue to dry, but then the next morning it was back to work, figuring out the inner workings of the base. Using some ripped down pieces of two by material, I made some little small supports that notched around the components of the end panels. And you can see here how I have it set up on the radial arm saw to cut out those notches. There's just two boards clamped left and right that I can shift it back and forth between and this makes the production of all these pieces quick and easy. There's one finished. And then how I'm going to attach these pieces into the base is with a combination of pocket screws into the legs and then some small screws into those dividers. I wouldn't be attaching them quite yet, but I went ahead and ripped some strips of oak that would dress up and add some support to that half inch plywood shelf. It would be attached later using biscuit joints, so I went ahead and cut them now in the little piece of oak and the shelf itself. The slides for the drawers are a little bit different than the supports for the shelf. 
I cut out a rabbit in the uh, the side that faces towards the inside of the cabinet. And this is to reduce the bearing surface between the drawer and the slide itself. Then I attached a maple strip to the bottom that the drawer would actually sit on. Using maple, it's nice and hard, so it's not going to wear out as quickly. And then later, they're all waxed for a really smooth action. Then those pocket hole screws uh, were used to attach these pieces with those additional screws into the vertical parts of the end panel. To prep the stock for making the drawers themselves, I first sort of resawed the material. And it wasn't so much to split it dead in half, but it was just to reduce the amount of material that I would have to plane. And that's also out of two by sixes. I then jointed edges and then glued them up according to the uh, height of the drawer, with the largest one being around uh, 10 inches or so in its final dimension. Once those uh, panels were glued up, planed and jointed and ripped and all that, I went ahead and cut them all to length to where I could get started on doing the actual joinery. And in this situation, I'm using finger joints cut on the table saw with a dado stack and a very quick homemade little jig here. It just keeps indexing on that same finger you see there, cutting out the um, fingers. And you gotta play with it and get it right, but it was just a quick solution, but a very strong joint. And there they all are sort of uh, dry fit and checking them. Next up was cutting a groove in the bottoms of those drawer pieces to accept a bottom panel, which is also made from Luon. And you can see that I'm sort of dropping it down onto the table saw blade and then lifting it off using some start and stop marks on the fence. The bottoms were ripped out of uh, the Luon and then checked for fit. Next up was assembling them, which is pretty easy, just using a small brush and applying glue to all the mating surfaces. While the glue was drying, I went ahead and got to work on the doors, ripping out the frame out of some previously dimensioned lumber. The inner panels of these doors are also made out of Luon, and I ripped that groove right down the center of the frame, flipping it end to end, and then finishing off that groove on the second cut. And this makes sure that that groove is perfectly centered and will match up on all the pieces. The components were then cut to length, leaving a little extra on the short sections to cut a little tongue that would go into the groove to complete the door frame. That was done on the radial arm saw just like the pieces in the end panels. The actual panel itself would also be made out of Luon, which I ripped on the table saw and then cross cut to length on the radial arm saw. The glue up of these panels were pretty simple. Uh, the only thing I had to do was align those little short pieces with some pencil marks on the longer pieces of the door frame and then take it over to my bench with some clamps and a square and make sure that they are glued up in a flat plane and also square in the corners. You can see here how the little short sections were lined up with the pencil marks and then those long sections left long to where they could later be trimmed as I'm demonstrating here using the sled on my table saw. That gets everything nice and flush. So I'm turning my attention back to the drawers and instead of actually putting pulls on these drawers I decided to do just holes through that you would reach to where there's nothing protruding from the actual drawer fronts. So I made a quick little jig to use my flush trim bit in my router plunged down to its depth, removed the jig, and then finished off the hole with the uh, bit itself riding on the inside of the hole. To uh, make it a little more comfortable, I installed a chamfer bit into my palm router and then routed that small chamfer on the inside and outside edges of that hole, and then got started sanding all the fingers flush and then also the tops and bottoms of the doors. I chose a simple 2 by one and 3 8 brass hinge from Lowe's and then needed to cut a mortise for it to go into, into the doors and the legs of the island. I did so using a simple jig and a flush trim router bit. I temporarily installed the doors to check for fitment and then made adjustments with a joiner hand plane and then took a final smoothing cut with a small block plane and then knocked the corners off just to soften all the edges. With the doors finished, that completes the construction of the island. And at this point, I usually like to go ahead and assemble things just to get a good look at it, make sure all my little gaps are even, things are fitting and moving properly, and just to enjoy the work that I've done so far. Up next is getting the top all smoothed out. I do so with a belt sander and then a random orbital sander. And then after I'm done sanding, I square up the ends with my track saw. And I like to trim the edges square after I've sanded it. I end up uh, with a, a cleaner edge when I do it that way. I use a router bit to round over the edge or add a chamfer and then apply the first coat of poly. I then sand the finish and reapply the poly as many times as it's called for for the project. 
The island's top attaches with metal tabletop fasteners that I ordered and they attach into biscuit joint uh, slots. So I got those cut and then got to work sanding the base getting it ready for paint. I painted it a gray that I got from Lowe's. It's just a latex wall paint and then put a polyacrylic as a top coat. For the drawers I taped off the, the fingers and then applied some clear coat, let it dry and then painted the drawer fronts and that kept the paint from bleeding under the tape. In the truest commitment to my woodworking or either in stupidity, the project wouldn't fit out of the door. So I had to remove the door to my shop to get the base of the island out and then carried it upstairs. Once it was upstairs and in place, the first step was to put the little floorboards back in and then attach the doors and put the shelf in. With the plywood uh, shelf installed, I could then glue on the little oak face piece um, that I mentioned earlier in the video. I clamped it in place and let it dry for an hour or so. To place the top, I just uh, sat it on top, centered it with a tape measure, and then attached it with those aforementioned tabletop fasteners. And I ordered these through McFeely's. It's the only thing I didn't get through Lowe's, but you could use some sort of little L bracket if you wanted. And then also you can see the little magnetic door catches that I used. To make sure that the drawers would slide nice and smooth, I applied some Minwax paste wax to the runners and the bottom edges of the drawers. And um, they really did... Uh, Make it super smooth, I was surprised how smooth of an action for such a heavy drawers. I mean, just the slightest breeze through the house, the draft, would make these drawers just go crazy on their own. Well, the island turned out really great, and my wife loves it, and she immediately jumped on it as soon as it was upstairs, filling it up with all of our little kitchen items, linens, uh, utensils, and other kitchen uh, stuff. And then the very next night, we put the island to use having a dinner party. It was my parents and her parents, which came from out of town, so that was really nice. Um, she did a great job putting together the evening, and it was a wonderful way to end such an involved project. We're both very happy with the way it turned out, and look forward to all the future use it's going to get. Well, that wraps up today's project, and I hope you all enjoyed the video. The island's been done for about two weeks now, and all the different features that I built in the design really have been great. If you end up building something similar and want to send me a picture, I'll include them in a future video. You can email those to me or send them to me over Facebook. And if you have any questions, be sure to include them in the comments below, and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, click the red button on the screen now, and you'll get updates when I post future videos.